The Atlanta Falcons wins eight and a half, juice to the over. Division plus 375, conference plus 1600, Super Bowl plus 3300. That's value to me. Matt Ryan, most passing TDs, plus 900. Most passing yards, plus 400. Julio Jones, most receiving TDs, plus 1600. Most receiving yards, plus 400. Devonta Freeman, comeback player of the year, plus 800. 2018 NFC offensive ranking third should be even better this year. 2018 fourth in NFL and passing yards should be even better this year. Weapons, Austin Hooper at tight end, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Muhammad Sanu, Devonta Freeman at running back. They use their two first round picks on the offensive line, drafting Boston College Chris Lindstrom at 14th overall and Husky Caleb McGarry at 31st overall. They were decimated with injuries defensively last year. Dan Quinn can make an average defense good I believe in Dan Quinn, Vic Beasley, McKinley getting after the quarterback. Can Ricardo Allen, Keanu Neal come back? They've been rehabbing together. Neal was a pro bowler in 2017. He lost 37 snaps. They have an athletic linebacking core. Donnie Wrightside, I'm really high on these Falcons. Can you bring me back? Should you bring me back? Yeah, look, I, uh, I'm still going to stick with I think New Orleans still is the top dog, but you're looking at some interesting stuff. And we always talk about when you're buying low you know, and, and you know, selling high at this point. The low point last year came in that lose, long losing streak for Atlanta. But can you blame the team for what they were going through? How many games did you see the offense rolling? Oh, no, Julio Jones is nicked up. Oh, my goodness, Cal Ridley is lighting it up. He's out for the second half. The offensive lineman couldn't stay healthy enough for Matt Ryan to stay upright. So they go out in the draft. They get two first-round picks, spend them both on the offensive line. Coming into the season, you're right, looks like they're going to be healthier. But the defense was 28th overall last year. But a huge part of that was due to injuries. When you just keep losing, Losing, guys, it doesn't get better as the season goes on. When you're damaging, you're getting your attrition in weeks two, three, and four and already losing starters. It only gets worse as it goes down the stretch. Now, the interesting point about this, you're taking a look at some odds here. 30 to 1 to win the Super Bowl, 14 to 1 to win the NFC. You get a little bit of nice value at the plus 275. Now, we can also put, let's see, the talent. We know the talent is there for Atlanta. We know the coaching staff is veteran. Matt Ryan's waiting to break through. But here's an interesting schedule quirk, which I like, because when we're taking a look at teams like the New Orleans Saints, and it's so important to get home field advantage, but if you look at Atlanta's schedule on the season, they only play three games outside? Are you kidding me? And we're not talking about going to Chicago. We're not talking about going to Seattle like some other teams in the division are going to have to do. We're talking about playing Tampa Bay on the road, San Francisco on the road, Carolina on the road. The rest at home on fast surfaces, which they're built for. You take a look at last year. Could the season have gone any worse, Jimmy? They got seven wins. You're going to line me up with an eight and a half this year with a healthy team coming in and say, you know what, guys? You don't have to play in Green Bay when it's cold. You don't have to play in Chicago when it's windy. Every team you play, which is only three games outside, they're going to be able to play basketball indoors. I like this Atlanta Falcons team. No doubt in my mind, they're scheduled for nine or more wins this year. So if you can still get that eight and a half, which is juiced at minus 121 from what I'm taking a look at, I think that's a valid shot. And very rarely, usually we talk about the schedules going after you and going against you, which we'll talk about another team in the division just a little bit. Atlanta schedule is sensational for just the optics of it. I believe in this squad. Great breakdown. Whale capper. I am very high on these Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Okay. So... First and foremost, strong agreement with both of you guys here. I think that, you know, Donnie brought up a point of buy low. So buy, if you buy the Falcons now, you're buying low on this team that has an absolute elite quarterback for the NFL right now, has spectacular weapons in the passing game, has just gotten rid of maybe the one piece that was holding them back on offense in their poor offensive coordinator last year in Steve Sarkeesian. They brought in a guy who has got a nice – offensive mind i don't know if i totally buy him yet i need to see it to believe it that he's going to be an elite play caller in this league but they're bringing in former head coach from tampa dirk cutter uh to be the offensive coordinator this year that to me reads as an upgrade but we got to see it okay so all, all told the offense should be absolutely on you know very 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 challenging the team to stop this has every read of like uh you know last year's chiefs in terms of their ability to score points uh and people definitely are kind of low on the defense because you look at the numbers from last year and it was an absolute dumpster fire. Now, the entire reason that it was a dumpster fire is they didn't have Keanu Neal and they didn't have Deion Jones for almost the entire season. Those are two enormously important pieces for this defense. They attack they those two pieces make the entire ability to stop the pass. You know, that's that's the that's that is the whole ball game right there. So just having those guys back, if they get full season health from those two players, they're going to be much more difficult to, to, to beat. Uh, they're going to be much more difficult to outscore. Really, you beat the Falcons last year by outscoring them, which 
ended up not being that hard, which is why they didn't have enough wins to go to the playoffs. But all, all this goes to say, um, if you're watching this now, at the end of July, you still have an opportunity to get on board with these prices for the Falcons, for the South, and for the Super Bowl at levels where there is where there's legitimate value on these numbers. Like, they are going to be in the race. Look at their schedule. They don't not, you know, Donnie nailed it on the schedule. They only have three outdoor games. Those games aren't until the end of the season. The first freaking 11 weeks of the season, they're playing in, in a dome with a team that is built for that. This sets up perfectly to get on board early, watch these guys put up 7-2 and two kind of a record over the first nine weeks of the season, and then you can decide what to do from there, how you want to balance your, your exposure. Yeah, I absolutely love those two breakdowns. Makes me feel very, very good about where I'm leaning and where I'm moving. Great breakdowns. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now, not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now, the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.